students welcome back to my class today we are going to study one small poem from Eunice Tisuja Eunice Tisuja as you know was an Indian poet who particularly wrote about the problems of women in the patriarchal society and being a teacher of English literature, she went through most of the contemporary feminist criticism and the feminist practices in literature. And in her writing, we find the reflection or the influence of the English writer and critic like uh, Virginia Woolf, Ellen So Walter and their ideas about feminism. As we know that Virginia Woolf had recommended a own way of women's expression, women's privacy through her a room of her own. And similarly, in Ellen So Walter, we find that different aspects of feminine existence, both in the social as well as in the literary sphere. So she also wrote a literature of her own. So Eunice Tissouza, she was influenced by these powerful thinkers. And she had taken feminism to a level where she was both critical of the woman who surrendered to the patriarchal conventions, norms and impositions. And at the same time, she also exhorts women to come out of these situations to assert their own in the society. And like the other modern Indian feminist poets, Kamala Das or we can say Sunita Jain or Gauri Despande, she has also produced the confessional poetry representing women's sensibility, women's experiences. And in her poetry also we find very uh, delicate presentation like Emily Dickinson from very small images or experiences she brings out a deeper understanding of a man-woman relationship and the identity of the woman. So this poem, Advice to Women, it is a very small poem of merely 12 lines. But here, the advice she is trying to give to all the women who go through the life of being a partner, life of being a passive partner and the life of being the victim of indifference, negligence, discrimination from their male partners. So here she is advising to the woman. But this advice we can also find it is at certain times bringing out from very common images a metaphorical sense of representing that assertiveness on the part of the woman in spite of being neglected. So the poem goes like this, keep cats if you want to learn to cope with the otherness of lovers. So she is bringing the cat, which is a very familiar creature in every home. And she is 
also bringing this image of the cat because women are mostly compared with the cats and she is telling keep cats that instead of keeping the blind faith in a broken relationship or in a neglected relationship or in a jilted relationship you better keep cats why if you want to learn to cope with the otherness of lovers because from the cats you can learn the otherness of the lovers in the condition of such indifference on the part of the lovers that how to cope with that that is the best advice that she can present the otherness is not always neglect and she is defining through this small line the otherness in man woman relationship she is telling otherness doesn't mean it is only neglect because neglect is a very simple negative mindset but she is telling that otherness in a relationship is much more complex having so many dimensions in a patriarchal society man is conditioned by the age old patriarchal conventions the norms of self love on the part of the patriarchy and the norms of the social dignity or the dignity of the male in relation with the female all these things they play a very complex role so otherness she is telling is not always neglect it is not mere neglect it may be anything and otherness also can be sometimes the extreme busyness on the part of the male which the woman has to follow the woman has to understand cats return to their litter trays when they need to and the cat they return to their litter trays they come back to their food trays the trays of their feeding when they need to so she is telling that there are basic biological needs which the cat in spite of getting the neglect in spite of getting the indifference from its owners she comes back to so the woman also has to come back to that basic need and similarly the basic needs are also there on the part of the lover who will come back so nothing to worry she is advising that the woman need not worry because the basic needs of life they will bring both together don't cast out of the window at their enemies and the next advice is don't cast out of the window at their enemies the cats if they are living in a building in a house because they are pets within the household and their enemies are on the street the dogs but the cats never cause the dogs from the window rather they exhibit a sense of dignity they exhibit a sense of happiness to make their enemies suffer not suffering themselves so she is advising women that not to make the lover know not to make the man know that you are suffering you are suffering or you are craving for the company so don't curse out of the window at their enemies you should be dignified in your dealings cursing or quarreling are not the ways of women's dignity 
Through cursing and quarreling, you cannot bring back the man to you, nor you can bring back your own dignity. Rather, to present yourself as indifferent when you come across that stare of perpetual surprise in those great green eyes will teach you to die alone. And finally, she is bringing another advice. The stare of perpetual surprise. The cats all the time they are having in their eyes because we know the eyes of the cats they are more, mostly round and the round eyes are indicative of surprise. Therefore, as if the stare of perpetual surprise. So, in their eyes we always find as if they are surprised every time, all the time. In those great green eyes and their eyes are green and here also the poet is suggesting a complexity because green, the dark green indicates ambition and it also indicates jealousy, greed. But at the same time, the olive green suggests peace. So in these green eyes of the cat, which is also round and indicates as if they are surprised at everything, it brings the basic spirit of self-contentment. So surprise means we are surprised at each and everything. We are giving ourselves the surprises. That means every time we are happy, we are excited. Even by confronting the mundane conditions of life, the woman should be happy. They should not complain about the boredom, complain about the space that they are confined to by the patriarchal society, rather they should find everything as if they are new, they are exciting. So the perpetual surprise in those great green eyes and there should be always ambition, there should be always the searching for peace, self-contentment will teach you to die alone. So she is telling that these eyes, indicative of so many things, they will teach you that how to die alone. That means how to live a life contented within your limitations. How you have to live, if necessary, a life of self-alienation, the ultimate goal of the human soul as preached by all the religion. So she is telling that we have to learn it from the eyes of the cat. And when that state of mind comes, there will be no tension, there will be no unhappiness, there will be no quarrel, there will be no differences. Rather, you can find the adjustment with yourself and adjustment with your partner and the adjustment with the whole world. So, the cat is a metaphorical presentation of the complex state of being on the part of woman in the man-woman relationship. So, this is a small poem and from this poem questions can be asked. That what are the advices Eunice D'Souza gives to women who are jilted in love or who are in a difficult relationship? Or it can be asked that why she has advised to keep the cat or what the cat exactly represents. I hope you will do justice to the poem.